everyone, so today I am here to do my favorite books of 2017. I almost just said 18. This year I read a lot of really amazing books, but I have a list of seven that I am saying are the best books that I have read this year. The majority of them are on my favorites list, um, and then I have five, four honorable mentions that I'm going to talk about. So these are in a particular order. I'm going to count down from seven and then count down from four. Um, so yeah, <laughs> these are the best books I have read this year. And I'm not going to lie, I thought this year was a pretty good reading year. I've read a lot of books. I read 102 books. Um, but I must say, like, yes, these are really good books. But like compared to last year where I was like, I had like 10 new favorite books. This is definitely a bit lower on my best reading years kind of thing um but these books are still amazing i do just feel like these aren't as i'm not as passionate about these books as i have been last year or the year before but anyways kicking it off with number seven on my list of favorite books it is a classic it is a play that i had to read for class but i still really love it and that is titus andronicus by shakespeare i had never even heard of this shakespeare play before I took my Shakespeare class and it ended up being my favorite play that we read this year. Um, my other favorite Shakespeare play is A Midsummer Night's Dream which I did read this year but it was a reread and I don't count rereads in this video. So my favorite Shakespeare play that I read was definitely Titus Andronicus and I think this will remain one of my favorites. I mean I read a lot of different Shakespeare plays this semester and none of them managed to beat this one, which was the first one that we read. And a lot of people might argue that this is like one of his worst books, or one of his worst plays. Like our teacher basically was teaching it to us because it was one of Shakespeare's early plays and he wanted to see us progress, like the progression of Shakespeare and how amazing he is as a writer. But I freaking loved this play. I loved it so much. It has the best scene in my entire reading experience of the fly scene, which is just hilarious. I also just really appreciate this book because of the fact that so many people are like, Shakespeare sucks in this book, but I kind of see it as, I feel like Shakespeare was writing this tragedy, but more as a comedy. Um, but I have an entire video where I am talking about my Shakespeare experience and about this book that I will link up somewhere um, about having a semester of Shakespeare. And, but yes, this is number seven on my list of favorite books of this year. Coming in at number six is the, I believe, one series that I have on this list, and that is the Wayward Pines series trilogy by Blake Crouch. This is a three-book trilogy, um, and it is a mystery horror thriller kind of series. I did not think I was going to like these at all all. And I think this is like one of the only books on here that didn't get a full five stars, but I just liked it too much to not put it on this list. All of the books basically got between like a 4.5 and a five star. I adore this series. I cannot recommend it enough and is definitely one of my favorite series of all time now. It is not beautiful literature, but uh, it's very, very entertaining. <laughs> Coming in at number five is the first book that I read this year, and I love this book so much. It got a full five out of five stars, obviously, and that is Dragon Springs Road by Jannie Chan. You guys probably recognize that name because she wrote my favorite book of all time, Three Souls, and this is her second novel that she wrote. I obviously really, really loved it, and I have a whole bunch of marks in it. Um, this is also set in historical China. I think it's the 1930s or, oh, 1908, 1930s is Three Souls. I love it. I love this so much. I love the characters. I love the setting. I love the writing. Jannie Chang's writing is just so amazing for me. It is so simple, but also beautiful. And I love this so, so much. I didn't love it as much as Three Souls, but this is definitely an amazing novel. I actually think a couple of people who have read Three Souls and Dragon Springs Road that I know, including I think my mom, actually like this one more. I mean, it's amazing, but it won't top Three Souls, obviously. <laughs> Coming in at number four is a book that no one is going to be surprised at, and that is Tattoo Atlas by Tim Florine. I'm so mad at myself that I didn't put Willful Machines on my favorite list last year because it is also one of my favorite novels, 
and Tattoo Atlas is the one that I read this year. It feels so long ago. I read this in like January or February, but it has stuck with me so long. I still get shivers thinking about this book and I want to reread it. Like, I think I might reread Willful Machines and Tattoo Atlas like in this upcoming year. Um, but I need more. I need more Tim Florine because this is absolutely amazing. This is about a boy who is gay, who is in high school, which yeah, I think this is the one YA book that I have on this list. And he's in high school and basically there is a shooting in front of his history classroom where his, one of his best friends is shot dead by another student. And he's kind of looking at the aftermath of that and it's very vaguely sci-fi because of uh, a scientific process, scientific thing that they're trying to do to the boy who shot the kid. They're trying to put something into his brain to make him feel empathy. Basically, this is just so amazing and Tim Florine is so good at endings and just rips your heart out and I love this book so much. I don't think I can say that enough about Tim Florine and if people haven't picked up his books yet from listening to me, I don't like YA and Tim Florine is amazing to me. So his storytelling is just so perfect and on point and I love him so much. Um, so yeah, if you guys haven't picked up Tim Florine yet, there's something wrong with you. All right, we are currently in the top three books. Woo! So this is probably my most surprising favorite book of the year. Like, I was not expecting to adore this book so much, and I'm still a little bit surprised at myself for, like, loving it as much as I do. I ended up writing my final essay on it, and I just freaking love this book. I don't, I don't know why. I can't explain it. It just, it gets me, and that is Waiting for Godot by Samuel Beckett. Wow, I can't, I just, again, I don't know, I, I wasn't expecting to like this book, but I swear every five seconds I was laughing out loud, I was showing things to my friends, I was just so in love with this play upon the first re re the first reading. I was literally just trying to get through it because it's a really short play and within the first like three lines I was like oh no I actually have to read this I can't just skim this because it's so amazing again like I said I wrote my final essay on this play I have written actually I wrote two essays this year on this play because I loved it so much and it is just it's so good it is a two-act tragic comedy it's about these two people Estragon and Vladimir who are sitting in the middle of nowhere and they're waiting for Godot, and they are not allowed to leave before they find Godot. And basically the whole premise of the story is that you have no idea how long these two people have been sitting there waiting, and you don't know how long that they're going to ever continue sitting there. And it is a tragic comedy because while it's extremely funny and it makes you laugh out loud and Estragon and Vladimir are so funny and Lucky is so funny and all of these things, it is a, tr a tragedy because of the hidden message of this story and it's basically it can be read as a story about refugees and how refugees are treated it can be looked at as a religious text because like I wrote my essay about how Godot is God and all of that kind of stuff and the fact that these two people are probably going to be sitting there waiting forever I just love this book so much I enjoyed it way more than I ever thought I was ever going to and I wrote probably my most proud essay I've ever written in my life on this play so I love this so much. <laughs> All right number two! Oh, there's I feel like there's two books that everyone knows that I'm gonna hold up but like which order are they gonna be in? That's the question. Well number two number two is going to Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. <laughs> I was very, very torn as to whether this should be two or one. This book, I love this book so much. I don't think I've shut up about this book since I finished it. <laughs> this is one of those books I was not expecting to enjoy that much. I thought it was going to be a, you know, a two, three star read. I read it for a readathon and I fell in love. I couldn't stop reading this book and I haven't stopped thinking about it since I finished it. I have made all of my friends and family read this book because it is so amazing. This book, I don't know where people got the idea that this is the next Gone Girl. Is it just because it was a thriller that was big? I don't know. But it's not even really a thriller. It's more of a sci-fi. Um, wow, actually I had quite a few sci-fis. This is a sci-fi that basically is based on the premise of Schrodinger's cat. Schrodinger's cat is you take a cat, you put it in a box with water and poison in a cup, 
and when you open the box there is a decision made and two multiverses split because in one multiverse you are going to open the box and there's a dead cat and in the other you're going to open the box and there's an alive cat that is what Schrodinger's cat is it's basically multi multi universes um and that's what this is based on and it is just so good I loved it so much and the reason I like this one probably more than like The Wayward Pines which is also by Blake Crouch is the writing is so much better and so much more fleshed out and so interesting and fast paced. I sat down and accidentally read like 250 pages of this book. It is so amazing. I can't highly recommend this enough. So good. I'm so upset with myself that I didn't put up a full review for this if I'm completely honest. And we are on to number one. Can y'all guess what it's gonna be? I bet you can. I bet you can. Um, my number one favorite read of this year is 1Q84 by Haruki Murakami. Yep. This was the- I only had two Murakami books to read this year and this was the one that I loved the most. <laughs> this is a monster of a book, <laughs> but it is a masterpiece. I will be the first to admit that the beginning is slow. The first like three, four hundred pages are very slow, but after that it is the most intriguing roller coaster of a book that I have ever read in my life. And I think about this book constantly. I'm actually currently rereading The Wind Up Bird Chronicle and I am seeing such giant parallels between these two books. I could write an entire essay on it. Um, but this book, it was just so incredible. It follows two characters, Tango and Omame, who are two people who they kind of knew each other in elementary school, but then they never saw each other again, and Omame is like an assassin who kills people who, uh, abuse women, and Tango is a writer who gets caught up in the story of this girl who wrote a novel and it got published, and it's like there's a cult and it's I can't I have an entire review for this book that I will link somewhere on the screen because it it you can't talk about this book in just a few minutes you have to talk about it for a solid 20 um this book is just incredible I gave it five stars obviously it is my number one book that I read this year and no it's not even just because of the length because I read some big books this year that aren't on this list I just loved this so much and it probably was one of the first books since like Wind Up Bird Chronicle that made me realize why I was reading Haruki Murakami. Like there were a couple instances where I was like yes this is so good like Wild Sheep Chase or After Dark and stuff like this but this was a reminder of why I started my Murakami journey of reading all of his novels and yes this was like one of the last books I read but it made it was so worth it to wait. I love this book so much. And these are the top seven books that I read this year, um, but I have just a handful of honorable mentions that I'm going to get to really quick. So at number four for honorable mentions, we have I Believe in a Thing Called Love by Maureen Gu. This book is just freaking adorable. It was a YA contemporary that I gave, I think I gave it a four and a half or five star, like I don't do that usually, but um, I loved it so much. It was so freaking adorable. I think it's one of the only YA contemporaries that I still have on my shelf because I usually get rid of them after I read them because they're just not that great to me. But this one is adorable. The main character is Korean American and her dad loves K-dramas and she starts watching them with him and when she gets a crush on a boy she decides to follow the K-drama steps to getting this boy. It's so funny. She has the K-drama steps to true love and if you are a person who likes K-dramas you have to read this because it is hilarious because it's so true. Um, I was laughing out loud at this book. I don't think I've ever laughed so hard at a book or nor have I taken so many like snapchats on my phone and like circled parts to send to people. Like this book just got me. It was so funny. So I highly recommend this book as YA contemporary. Definitely. The next two honorable mentions kind of go together and as most people know I was on quite a Peter Pan kick at the beginning of this year into the summer where I read a ton of Peter Pan and Peter Pan retellings. So I figured I would mention my top two Peter Pan retellings and that is Lost Boy Chris by Christina Henry and Peter Darling by Austin Chant. Peter Darling is actually the first book that I read that got me on this Peter Pan kick. I loved it. I loved it. 
It was so good. I read it on my Kindle and then I immediately had to buy my own copy, which I don't do that. So this is about a, this is a retelling of Peter Pan if Peter Pan was Wendy and Peter Pan was a transgender person and it is amazing. It is a love story. Um, so that one's very interesting, but I highly recommend it if you like Peter Pan, but also if you don't like Peter Pan and just like LGBT stories, definitely. As well as Lost Boy by Christina Henry was just so amazing. I loved the writing of this book. This is another one that I had as an e-arc and I end up buying a copy of it. Um, I just adored this so much. I thought this was my favorite Peter Pan um, representation. This one, definitely. And then my number one top honorable mention that honestly probably could have been in my top books. I like number eight is Human Acts by Han Kong. Did anyone notice it was missing from right there? <laughs> First off, this is my favorite cover I've ever seen on a book, ever. It is beautiful. It, there is a reason why it's the only book on display in my sh bookcase. This book is beautiful on the outside and on the inside. I am a fan of Han Kong. I think The Vegetarian was on my top books of last year or honorable mentions of last year. A lot of people don't like her. I can't get enough of her. I need more. Um, this book, I have so many, like, dog-eared pages that I never put the tabs in for, but this book was just haunting. It was beautiful, um, in that sense, but also I loved this book so much because it didn't sugarcoat anything. I hate when books sugarcoat violence and death and war and make it into, like, almost a romantic thing. Like, that's kind of disgusting in my opinion, and this book did not sugarcoat it at all. This is a book that is set in the violent student uprising in South Korea, and it's just... We follow different people and it's just really, really beautiful. I highly recommend this if you like quiet stories and also don't like books or like, like books that don't sugarcoat things. Um, and yes, this is amazing. So those are the books that I suggest as honorable mentions, not as good as my top, but are still incredible. Anyways, I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. Definitely tell me down below if you have read any of these books or if you are now planning on reading them based on my suggestion. And definitely tell me what your number one book of this past year was because I totally need some recommendations. Um, but anyways, I love you all and I will see you all soon. Bye!